Why market leading organizations embrace paradox. A key idea taken from both and thinking by Wendy Smith and Marianne Lewis. Professional success or a fulfilling personal life. Creative integrity or commercial viability. Individual satisfaction or communal well being. Contemporary life is full of conflicting choices. When faced with these choices, our brains revert to either or thinking. We view conflicting choices as dilemmas where one option must be pursued at the expense of the other. But we can learn to delve deeper into our dilemmas and embrace the paradoxes that underpin them. A paradox occurs when different elements of a situation are in tension with each other. As you'll learn in this very short blink, this tension can actually be productive and even make your organization more successful. Let's get acquainted with two methods for approaching paradox the way of the mule and the way of the tightrope walker. Mules are the offspring of horses and donkeys, bred to be more patient than a horse and smarter than a donkey. The best of both. In the both and mindset, your mule is a strategy that lets you synergize two opposing elements of a paradox to create a win win. Say you have a calendar clash between a leadership retreat and a family wedding. You could cancel one, or you could breed a mule. For example, you could offer to plan part of the retreat, putting in the hours ahead of time to demonstrate your commitment to your work, but spend the day itself at the wedding. Other times, you might want to try the tightrope walker method. Here, you're not trying to integrate competing priorities, but disperse your attention across them. How might a tightrope walker respond to that dilemma of the calendar clash? They'd examine how well they're balancing the opposing poles of work and family and decide what shifts are needed to keep things in an overall equilibrium. If the tightrope walker had been putting in long hours at work, they might decide it's time to give their family more attention and opt out of the retreat, making a note to correct the balance at work later. Whether you want to try breeding a mule, walking a tightrope, or just freestyling in the face of paradox, always remember the ABCs and D of embracing a paradox mindset. A is for assumptions, more accurately, challenging assumptions. Facts are facts, but truths can be different for everyone. Recognizing that different truths can coexist is a key pathway into both and thinking. B is for boundaries. You shouldn't embrace tension purely for the sake of it. What's your mission statement? Where do your limits lie? What are your must haves and your deal breakers? Questions like these will help you set the boundaries you need to engage with tension in a sustainable way. C stands for comfort. Paradoxes breed uncomfortable feelings. Accept discomfort when it arises and try to lean into the positives of uncertainty. Excitement, potential, and wonder. And D? That's for dynamism. Both and is a mindset, not a one off strategy. Ensure you're constantly tweaking your patterns, seeking feedback on your actions, and letting go of assumptions that no longer feel fresh. Now, how can adopting a both and mindset create market leaders? Let's look at a company who used a both and mindset to reinvent itself. Multinational consumer goods firm Unilever was on the brink of bankruptcy after a series of ill judged mergers and acquisitions when a new CEO with a both and mindset pulled off one of the biggest corporate transformations in recent history. When Paul Polman came on board in 2009, just after the financial crash, the mood was so dire that Unilever was stocking competitors' tea bags in the canteen. Management doubted that Unilever could recover amid economic turmoil and challenges posed by issues like climate change. 
Pullman, too, was aware of these challenges, but he did one thing differently from the rest of the C-suite. Instead of wondering how Unilever could prevail in spite of global challenges, Pullman wondered if Unilever could positively affect those challenges while also performing more profitably. The result of this both-and thinking was the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan, a corporate strategy to save the planet as well as the firm. This dynamic approach wasn't simply focused on getting Unilever out of its current rut, but on poising it for success across new contexts. Can you operate sustainably and profitably? Unilever completely committed to this paradox. It set goals to lower its waste and use of resources, work with sustainably sourced materials, and absorb small farms and enterprises in the developing world into its supply chain, while doubling profit. These goals created tensions across the company, and those tensions sparked innovation. Unilever found ways to cut expenses while also increasing sustainability. For example, by minimizing plastic packaging or the use of palm oil. It established partnerships with competitors, with the aim of creating sustainability standards across the industry. And it sensitively expanded its reach in developing countries where, by acting globally and locally, it traded on its well-known brand but sought to address local needs. Through a paradox mindset, Pullman and Unilever turned the tensions that were threatening to sink the company into positive energy that's currently driving profits and impacting the planet for the better. Okay, so here's a final thought. Ever heard of serendipity? Think of it as planned luck, when you have the nous to turn a seemingly random event into a desirable outcome. Alexander Fleming was working on an influenza cure when penicillin sprouted in his lab. That's luck. The fact that Fleming saw the penicillin's potential? That's serendipity. As both and thinking becomes a habit, you'll see tensions and possible synergies everywhere, even when you're not actively grappling with a paradox. Train yourself to engage with them anyway. After all, a moment of serendipity might be just around the corner. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs>